Alright, hi everyone, welcome back to another video of Salesforce Makes Sense. This is Imanshu and we are understanding Apex through our Salesforce Developer Masterclass. This is use case 25. For those of you who want to pause the video, take a look at the use case and try it out yourself. Please pause the video and comment below the code that you have written. It would help me understand that yeah, you are able to write Apex confidently. And for those of you who want to follow along and do this with me, let's get started. Find the queue name from a custom label and assign the created case to the queue. Alright, so the only twist compared to the two previous use cases that we did around queues and cases is that we have a custom label showing up, right? So what are custom labels? Custom labels are a platform offering wherein you can actually store any kind of static information. So if you go to Salesforce setup and you go to the quick find box and you type custom label, you'll see custom labels available. Okay, what can I do here? I can create a new custom label and I can say my primary queue. All right, I just add a space here for and I'll add an underscore here and the value would be the SLA queue. All right, or let's say the SLA underscore queue. I'll store the developer name here. Let's say, okay, save. So that creates a custom label in the system. Custom labels also have a record ID, but custom labels are not S objects. Okay, we, we learned this in our uh, theory theory sessions right towards the start of the curriculum that custom labels can be directly directly used and they don't have to be actually instantiated so they are not s objects okay now now if i take a look at the use case it says find the queue name from the custom label and assign the created case to the queue okay so what we are going to do is we are going to create a new apex class i'll call it apex use case 26 and i'll create a method here so essentially I'll be expecting or accepting a method, uh, a case record here and I'll be returning nothing basically. Okay. So I'll just say assign case to Q. That's my method name and I don't need to return anything, but I'll accept a, let's say I'll accept a ID, case reg ID. Okay. This would be the case record that I want to modify. Now, what do I need to do? I basically need to query this case get the owner id field and update it with the queue which is in the custom label that's the next set of actions that we have to do so let's get started i'll say list of case case to assign I'll say select ID comma owner ID. Why am I doing this? Because I need this owner ID field. And why do I have to do this? Because I just have the ID field on the method parameter. So I have to query it out. So I'll say from case where ID is equal to colon case rec ID linking it here. Okay. Ideally and essentially this will always have one record and I can simply say if case to assign dot size is equal to equal to one which means i found a case right if i found a case i can say case to assign of zero dot owner id is equal to now i need to assign the owner id and i need to write the update command correct that's what i need to do now how do i get the owner id right so we need to leverage our custom labels so what do I need to do? I need to actually, I have the label name. I have the queue name in the custom label stored in my custom label, but I need to query the ID of the queue, right? So what do I query here? I'll query list of queue and it should not be queue. It should be group. Why? Groups store the queue name. Okay. So I'll say queue info is equal to select ID from group where yes, type is equal to queue and developer name correct developer name is equal to now i need to check the value that is assigned here right on the custom label so i could have directly written sla underscore q but i want to use it through my custom label okay so this is my developer name so i'll just copy this here and what can i do here i can go to vs code and here i can use the system class system has the label inside it and i can put the label and that's how you would probably have to call your custom label. This will evaluate to SLA underscore Q because that's the value it stores and the developer name is equal to SLA underscore Q will return one record to the Q info list variable. Okay, I'll put a limit one tag here and I'll just say Q info 
of zero dot what do I need I need the ID because that's the QID alright what could I do I could put a check here a null check so even that can be done for best practices for QInfo if I found a record only then go ahead and assign it or else don't even bother okay so if both the sizes are equal to one only then go ahead and do this or else don't even bother alright let's try to deploy and let's see first of all it deploys fine or not deploy it fine and now it is time to check our use case through the anonymous window so I'll just go ahead and say 26 dot assign case to queue now I want to assign one specific queue right so I need to put the record ID here of that particular queue of that particular case not queue so let's go to the plus tab this is in Salesforce classic it has switched to lightning let's go to where do I have cases showing up cases and if you take a look at this case right design issue with mechanical rotor is currently assigned to Himanshu but what we want to do as part of our use case is that it should automatically call our method and assign it to the SLA queue based on the custom label so let's pick this record ID let's go to the anonymous window paste it here remove the space and I'll say execute something is wrong what is wrong let's go ahead and remove the debug statement here and now let's try to execute because there was no return type system.debug was not returning anything so it was failing so it has executed fine and if I have to double confirm I see one DML statement has executed meaning if I take a look at this record now you see Himanshu shows up here but if I refresh my tab let's refresh the page you'll see that this record is now assigned to the SLA queue perfect the ownership has changed alright so that was pretty much our use case alright now when would you actually do this when would you actually use labels you would actually use labels when you want to keep something configurable right tomorrow if you have to modify let's say this code goes to production right and hopefully you guys know that you cannot modify apex code in production directly you always have to do it on sandbox then deploy it with test class coverage right so if you want to tomorrow do the same practice for let's say the escalation queue would you rechange the code and then go back to deploying the code redoing the test class no right so it's better to configure it on a custom label alright so I configured the name of my queue on the custom label and whenever I have to modify it or I have to reuse it or repurpose it I can simply go to my labels and I can modify it if I modify it here the code will dynamically run based on the label value that it has correct so I can just modify this value as escalation queue or some other name and it will pick up automatically when not to use a label or what is not a good way to use a label to store hard-coded record IDs that does not make sense if I were to go here take a look at my queue copy the queue name from queue ID from here and I paste it here then what's the point it does not make sense right it's not a good practice to store hard-coded IDs right that means that you are somehow putting a hard code reference because in this case you are still querying it out right based on the name you are querying it out but using a label to use a hard code ID and then using that custom label here is basically the basically more or less the same thing of hard coding it here okay it's not a good practice and if you can query it out why to hard code it in the first place and imagine the number of hard coding that you have to do then right there are so many records so many record type IDs okay so I've seen a lot of validation rules a lot of apex class code a lot of record type IDs related uh, static record uh, static record IDs are stored on custom labels that's not a good practice to be honest okay so let's avoid that we, you can use the name you can use the API name you can, you can use the developer name or you can use some identifier not the hard-coded IDs okay cool that's all I wanted to talk about in this particular use case I will see you in the next one bye